Contraire, my boy. I won this. All of it. Tonight on Wax Magic. Eleven people have disappeared. We are doing everything we can to get to the bottom of this. When it landed here last night, it was emptier than a gigolo's promises. Imagine what the pilot must have been thinking. The pilot? There wasn't anybody there. Right now, we're trying to determine how the plane was flown. You mean like the plane just stopped in midair? If you can figure this one out, I just may take back everything I ever said about your profession. at those stars, kind of like they belong to you, you know what I mean? And the air. Feel that air. Now, you got to admit, Seymour, you don't get air like this back in Baltimore, do you? Do you? No, but it, it seems so awfully isolated. But that's the beauty of it, peace and quiet. Why, the opportunities are boundless. A resort hotel, a dude ranch, a fat farm. No offense. I'd uh, develop it myself, but my other interests are just keeping me too busy these days. I don't know, Mr. Black. I... We must be, what, 20 miles from town? 18.7, to be exact. A mere whoop and a farthing. Yep, that's what first drew me to cave in. The serenity, the... This is not your typical night in Cayley. Shut up. See it. See it. I said, watch where you're driving. said anything about cars. We got a deadline. I'm thinking, Bruin, I'm thinking. Come on, back it up here. Back it up. Come on. Who are you? Leonard Black, sir, owner of Cave Inn. And this gentleman is Seymour Bindle of the Baltimore Bindles. You own Cave Inn. What happened to C.J. Peckinpah? Made some questionable investments, had to unload in a hurry. Never mind. Come on.
Hello. Now, you folks got to get out of here. Hello, Virgil. Hi, John. What, what the hell's going on? There's no pilot, is there? The hell did... Oh, my God. Well, there must have been passengers. Where are they? What happened to them? This don't make no sense, John. Andy, get him out of here. Come on. All right, folks, come on. Let's move it out. Come on. Move it out. Let's go. Come on, keep moving, please. My pleasure. Believe me, Sheriff. Sheriff, we're talking major weirdness here. I mean, how can a crew and all those passengers just disappear off the face of the earth? Not to mention, how does an airplane land itself? There's got to be a rational explanation. Tell me, Evan, how long has your sister been a flight attendant at Southwest International? Uh, about a year and a half. Mr. Black. Alex. Alex. It's so good of you to come all the way out here from New York. I didn't know where to turn. Then I ran into your father. I told her if anyone can come up with the answers, it's my boy. Apparently, I would have had to have made this trip anyway. The reasons for which are about to become perfectly clear. Including, I trust, what the hell you're doing in this godforsaken place when you're supposed to be in Philadelphia. Trust me. Uh, why don't I just wait for you over by the plane? Great. This will just take a few minutes. Do you have any idea how worried Aunt Ethel and Uncle George are? Good souls, but they always were a couple of worry warts. Worry warts? You just take off, what, four days ago? No luggage, just disappear? Had a lovely visit. Ethel looks just terrific for her age, and George, well, he's George. Thing was, about the second night, we'd all just about run out of uh, things to talk about. You know how that is with relatives. So I looked up an old friend of mine from the Carney days, Ralph Bowers. You might remember him. Short, balding, little pencil mustache, and a mole right here. Get to the point, Pop. Anyway, happens uh, Ralph is running a little uh, investment business. Draw poker. High, low, jacks are better. So I figured, why not venture a Kopeck or two? And you lost your shirt. Au contraire, my boy. I won. This. All of it. You won a ghost town in a poker game? Pair of fours, couldn't even open. Drew, three aces. What's this gonna cost me? Uh, 12,000, give or take a few hundred. 12,000 dollars? Well, the fella I won it from never told me about the mortgage. The payment's due this week or the bank will foreclose. You'll get it back as soon as I sell the place. Uh, Pop, is that all? Uh, <clears throat> Not quite. It seems I tried drawing to a couple of inside straights. I figured I was on a roll. You know how sometimes you just can't yeah, call him? How, how much? Well, I owe Ralph 1500 bucks. He wants his money by next week. I offered him the deed to cave in. He said he wasn't interested. I wonder why. Pop, we're going to have to talk about this another time. Meanwhile, where's this plane of yours? <clears throat> There you go, SIA Flight 33, the mystery plane. They said when it left its last stop, it was carrying eight passengers, the pilot, co-pilot, and Evan's sister. When it landed here last night, I can vouch for this, it was emptier than a gigolo's promises. Son, if you can figure this one out, I just may take back everything I ever said about your profession. Yeah, okay. Man, it must be 200 degrees in there. Miss Jordan, Mr. Black. Uh, that's both of us. This is my father. Pleasure. Oh, 
yeah, The Tonight Show. Boy, I like the way you made Johnny disappear. Tom Olmstead, FAA. I guess, uh, Deputy Costas explained to you that we can't allow anybody aboard while we're conducting an investigation. We'd appreciate any information you can give us. There's nothing to tell yet. Right now, we're trying to determine how the plane was flown. I assume you've eliminated the possibility of radio control? One of the first things we check for. No electrical devices, no computer system. How about the black box? Well, my assistant's listening to the cockpit tape right now, but the flight recorder's gonna take a long while to analyze. Look, I don't have any more time to spare, but I do want to assure you that our agency, as always, will find a simple, rational explanation... Da! To... Da! You gotta hear this. Cockpit recording, uh, uh, the first part was routine, minimal radio contact uh, after takeoff from Durango. Then 23 minutes into the flight, the flight attendant brings in coffee, complains about feeling chilly. Captain Sanders uh, adjusts the cabin temperature. This is recorded 2,213 hours last night. Until I know. Captain, there's a whole bunch of them. What's happening? Oh, my God. That's all there is. It's dead from then on. Well, yeah, uh, you know, like uh, when a car's left with the motor running and, and it sort of uh, drives off by itself. Yeah, well, I just figured some of my rejects hijacked the airplane, and, uh, they forgot to cut the motor off. And it just took off by itself, and then landed by itself. Dwayne, you are mondo strange. Hey, it could happen. Sure it could. You know what I think, Mr. Black? I mean, you'll laugh, but I'll bet it's got something to do with parallel worlds. My dad's got this book, and it... I'm strange. Uh... Listen, thanks, both of you. I really appreciate your help. Uh, if you think of anything, no matter how insignificant, give me a call, huh? We will, Mr. Black. I'm telling you, Dwayne, it's got something to do with the fifth dimension. Or is it the sixth? <laughs> Seymour, you can't possibly go wrong, not at the price I'm giving you. And I'll tell you something else. There's been rumors floating around for a long time that Caven is sitting on top of certain, shall we say, liquid assets. Oil? You're trying to tell me there's oil under there? Absolutely not. I mean, I didn't build my reputation on pie in the sky for misrepresentation. Just passing along what I've heard. Like I said, Seam, I'm up to here with my other ventures, or I'd have looked into it myself. Yeah, well, uh, I gotta go. Uh, I'll have to let you know. Yeah, well, don't take too long. He who hesitates and all that. Alex, over here. Learn anything from the kids? <laughs> but as much as I learned from Seymour. Evan, tell me a little bit more about your sister. The short form. Marion's 23. It's gorgeous, bright. She has a degree in English. She's working on her master's, and suddenly she decides she has to be a flight attendant. See the world and all that. On Southwest International? Two weeks ago, Marion's paycheck bounced. Why did she continue to work for such a shoddy operation? She and Dave Becker, he's the co pilot for this flight. They're an item. He's good for her, he's solid looking to leave SIA. I hope this is all still in the present tense. I, uh, I beg your pardon. Would you happen to be Miss Jordan? Yes, I am. Ah, good. They told me at the desk I might find you here. I just want to make sure you're okay. Uh, Chuck Dorsey, Southwest International Public Relations. I'm the one that notified you about the, uh, uh, incident. Incident? Disaster, I think you mean. And I'm not all right, as long as my sister is still missing. Look, we are doing everything we can to get to the bottom of this. Mr. Dale Gregory, the president of SIA, was aboard that flight, too. Uh, you must be the gentleman who's helping, Miss Jordan. How do you do, Mr. Black? We'll see. I'm his father. I'm the one that got him to come all the way down here. Mr. Dorsey, aside from Mr. Gregory, was there anything out of the ordinary about... Any of the passengers on that plane? No, not really. Uh, your usual assortment. Uh, a salesman, uh, uh, exchange student, I think. Um, 
Let's see, a doctor, a, a kid, oh, and a, and a sailor on leave. I understand Flight 33 was bound for Taos out of Durango, Mexico. I presume that's what entitles you to the International in Southwest International. Well, now, that, that um, you, you, see, that, uh, yes, yes, that, uh, Flight 33 makes a circle. Uh, Phoenix, Durango, Taos. Um, now, normally, of course, we fly much newer equipment, but there was a mechanical problem in Durango, um, and that old DC-3 happened to be available. So, uh, uh, listen, I, I'm sure you can understand we're trying to maintain a low profile on this. You're asking me to help you people keep this quiet. Well, now, now, Miss Jordan, you see, it's my job to put out fires before they start. You know how the press likes to blow things out of proportion. Out of proportion? This is hardly a case of overbooking or misplaced luggage. Young fella, I'd say your profile is about to rise faster than a hooch dancer's heartbeat in a hailstorm. Oh, boy. I trust you brought your fire hat, Mr. Dorsey. Man, some piece of cake. It's bad enough they got a 24-hour guard on the plane. Now the town's filling up with yahoos. Kerwin, will you stuff it? What? What? You know a way we can get aboard that thing by tonight without putting us on the satellite news? Because if you don't, we better disappear. But we feel confident that with the help of the FAA team, we'll have this matter resolved very quickly. Thank you, Sheriff Tallman. Certainly. And that's the story till now on the ghost plane. Art Bear, KXNX News, Santa Fe, reporting live from Apache Springs, New Mexico. Well, that uh, pass muster, Mr. Dorsey? Well, as a matter of fact, Sheriff, could you possibly avoid mentioning the name of the airline at all? <laughs> well, why don't I just tell him it was an ocean liner landed out there? Mr. Gregory's gonna have my head on a platter for this. If there still is a Mr. Gregory. Now, Mr. Black. I know all about you, and you're not to figure this sort of thing out. But this is my baby, thank you, and between the FAA people and myself, we'll get to the bottom of this just fine. Believe me, Sheriff, the last thing I want to do is get in the way. Oh, good. Oh, we understand each other. And the answer is no. You cannot examine the passenger's luggage. Uh, Sheriff, there's two more TV crews in town, plus reporters from San Francisco, New York, Chicago, and Washington, and the London Times is on the phone, and they would like a statement. I'll get back to them. Oh, look, uh, you can notify uh, Miss uh, Jordan and the other next to kin as soon as we know something, anything, they'll know. Damn it. Why can't I ever find a pen when I want one? Pen? You want a pen? <laughs> How'd you do that? Tell you what, Sheriff, I'll tell you how I did it if you let me examine that luggage. Answer still no. Look, Sheriff, I'm not trying to win anything. Neither are you, I hope. There are a lot of people missing. They're probably in danger if they're still alive. And with every passing hour, it just gets worse. I just want to help. Oh, hell. Truth is, I could use some. Well, been over it all. Don't know as you'll find much. Thing of it is, Rango County ain't exactly your baffling mystery capital of the world. In a couple of uh, stolen cars a month, barroom fight or two, a yeah, pharmacy break in last night over Grimstone. <laughs> and this morning, Ranchan takes a shot at his wife, misses and kills his horse. But that's as good as it gets. This thing, this is downright spooky. That it is, Sheriff, that it is. Chuck, what? Chuck? Yes? When you notified the families, were there any unusual reactions, anything out of the ordinary? Not really. Um, shock, disbelief. One of them yelled at me like it was my fault. Oh, and two of them I didn't reach. Which two? Captain Sanders' wife, Hillary. Uh, she's also a pilot, flies right-hand seat on the heavies for Pan-Oceanic. She's en route home from Cairo. She'll be back tomorrow. I just didn't want to rattle her. And the other? Uh, name on the manifest was a T. Wilson. Uh, no address, paid for his ticket in cash. You know, come to think of it, no one's even called to inquire about him. Yeah, well, here's his bag right here. Yeah, they were good locks, but had to bust them. Just the holster, no gun? No, not so as you can notice. T.S. Blade, Henderson, Nevada. 
Mr. Black, you think this uh, whole thing with the plane is just a trick of some kind? Well, I certainly hope so, Sheriff. That we can deal with. Meanwhile, I'd suggest you run a check on Mr. Blade. <laughs> The state of New Mexico has no record of a town named Cave Inn. But I was there. I saw it with my own eyes. All right, all right, all right. I believe you. Wait. What about something similar to Cave Inn? Cave to what? Wait a minute. Hey, could you spell that? Okay. Hold it a minute. Built in 1898. By Count who? Now, friend, give this to me nice and slow. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> Mr. Black, I told you there is no possible way I can authorize you going aboard that aircraft until we have completed our investigation, and that is that. That can take days, Mr. Olmsted. Look, we are fully aware of the urgency and of your anxiety about your sister, ma'am, but we have got our regs to follow. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going back to analyzing that flight recorder. I'm sure it's going to tell us something. If Marion met him, maybe she wouldn't needle me about being so much by the book. <laughs> you said she called you last weekend from Colorado? She was with Uncle Ted and Aunt Flo in their hunting cabin up in the mountains outside Denver. <laughs> Apparently, the only thing that Uncle Ted shot was a squirrel inside the cabin, if you can believe that. I think they had more luck with the fishing. <laughs> well, forgive the interruptions, but we haven't had this much activity around here in, oh, 20 years. Not since those Hollywood people come up and shot that movie out of cave-in. I sure did enjoy ferrying them back and forth in Palm Springs. Mr. Federson, you are making this whole thing sound like a... a show. Eleven people have disappeared. They could even be... Hey, I'm, I'm sorry, ma'am. I, I know just how you feel. Well, that was a... Fine steak. Uh, got a nice restaurant here, Mr. Ferguson. Best in the winds. Tell me, uh, that airstrip, was that, uh, was that built by the film company? Yeah. You hardly use sense, though, except for those kids and their damn cars. You said you, uh, heard the plane coming in. Oh, yeah. Right over my roof. See, my ranch board is on the airstrip, so I just oozed on over there and, uh, see all that stuff on the plane. The card game looked like somebody just stopped in the middle of some poor little kid's toys. Imagine what the pilot must have been thinking, trying to land this plane with all those cars going up and down. The pilot? No, there wasn't anybody there. Planes don't fly themselves, Mr. Fedderson, at least not yet. And according to the FAA, certainly not that one. Well, anyway, that plane's got to have a whole lot of clues on it, Mr. Black. It's only a matter of time till somebody gets a handle on it. Time. Meanwhile, Marion and the others... Oh, God. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm sorry, Miss Jordan. I, I keep saying the wrong things. Mr. Black, you let me know if I can help, huh? I'll do that. Forgive me, Alex. Oh, nothing to forgive. Well, one thing our host was right about. An awful lot of answers will be on that plane.
Yeah, it is chilly in here. I zap my brother right in the face with my water pistol. From the FAA? Uh, I need to see some ID, please. souvenir hunters for you. That's them. Hands behind your back. But, Mr. Black. There you go, officer. You all right? You're the right I've better. Um, you speak, you did you have anything to do with the May Day call? May Day, May Day. When you came on board, I slipped on behind you and hid in the lavatory till you left. Man, you sure had me spooked. All right, move it. Come on, let's go. Outside. You've got a lot more explaining to do, Mr. Black. I told you this is federal property. Well, Olmstead, we're both here for the same thing. To find out the truth about Flight 33. I think I may have some answers. Over here. Whatever those men wanted is still on this plane. Worth enough to risk charges of assaulting a police officer. Oop. Here we are. Blade alias Wilson, the man with the empty holster in a suitcase. No drugs sure fit the profile we got on him from Washington. Is he a pilot? Not according to a sheet. Look, why would my husband's plane have landed at Cave Inn in the middle of all those hot rodders? Maybe because whoever was flying that plane had no choice. There was only a teaspoonful of gas left in the tanks. Empty plane, no passengers, no crew. Cargo of cocaine. Teenagers all over the runway, the sheriff's car bearing down across the field at him. The pilot had no choice but to do a disappearing act. But how? And what became of the other passengers? My husband. Sheriff Tallman here. Homestead, it's for you. Damn it, why did he have to be so pig-headed? I pleaded with him Homestead to quit that here. nickel and dime operation. Oh, please, Mrs. Sanders. OK, thanks. My assistant just finished running the flight recorder data through the computer. Flight 33 was cruising at 7,200 feet. And then it just stopped recording. You mean like the plane just stopped in midair? Well, but that's impossible. Tom, where are the circuit breakers located on that aircraft? Well, they're located in a box on, mounted on the wall right by the pilot's seat. Then they just turned it off so we wouldn't find where they were heading. And it looks that way. Are you saying Cal had something to do with this? No, Mr. Sanders, I'm not saying that. But the fact is, if those circuits were opened, whoever was flying the plane reset them after the plane landed. <laughs> but then now there was nobody on the plane when it landed. Sheriff, last time we talked, you mentioned a break-in at a pharmacy a few nights ago? Yeah, about 40 miles from here over to Rimstone. It's kind of strange. Why? What was taken? Well, none of the regular stuff junkies would have grabbed, but uh, as a matter of fact, they didn't even touch the register. They did take an entire supply of antibiotics, tetracycline. Yeah, that would fit. Fit? What? Cave in worthless? Seen 
mean you don't know what you're saying? Wrong. Leonard, you're obviously a shrewd businessman. But this time, you goof. Well, I, I, I admit, I, I, I acquired it on instinct. I mean, it just seemed like it was, you know, in the cards. Now, seeing not that I'll have any trouble finding another mark, I mean buyer, I did make certain promises, financial commitments, based on our consummating this thing today. Sorry, I wish I could help you, Leonard, but... Uh... Wait, say I knocked off, oh, 25%. Out of the question. See you, Leonard. Hold it! I tell you what, and I'm talking way under sticker. 20,000. Impossible. I must be out of my mind. All right, I'll give you 12. Take it or leave it. 12? You've got to be kidding. 12 to Alex, 1,500 to Ralph. Seam, 13,005, and I'm letting you steal it. Oh, what the hell? Call me a pushover. <laughs> Evan! Alex, what is it? Did you learn something? Oh, no, 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 nothing yet. Uh, there is something you can help me with, though. I'm afraid my medical knowledge is a bit sketchy. I could use your nurse's expertise. What is tetracycline used for? <sighs> tetracycline? Well, it's very wide spectrum. It's prescribed for some pneumonias. Uh, salmonella poisoning, typhus. A couple of months ago, we cured a case of Rocky Mountain spotted fever with it. Alex, does this have something to do with... You mentioned that your sister had told you that when she was at your uncle's cabin in Colorado, the hunting was bad except for one squirrel. I found an empty paper carton on that plane, labeled tetracycline. Now, the cockpit recorder indicates that Marion came forward more than once to ask the captain to raise the cabin temperature. And there were several blankets left on the seats. Chills. It's possible that squirrel carried fleas. Oh, my God, Alex. Bubonic plague. His pilot's license was pulled in 1980. High blood pressure. OK, thanks, Felix. I still don't see where you're going with this, Mr. Black. Where I'd like to go is airborne. Airborne? Hmm? You mean it? Oh, no. No, no. Not as long as I have responsibility for that airplane. Hey, if my supervisor knew half the things I let you get away with already, he'd have mine. Hey, what are all these people doing out here? I invited them. I would like to do a little recreation. What are you going to use for fuel? I had it gassed this morning. I must be totally out of my mind. Thank you, amigo. After living with all the backups and electronics, this is like real flying for a change. Uh, we're heading 198, airspeed 140, ETA. What is our... I don't even know where we're going. As soon as I find out, I'll let you know. But I'm sure it's that way. Yeah. Alex. Do you think there's a chance he'll be okay? Yes, I think there's a chance. And no, I don't think your husband was involved. Thanks. And now it's showtime. Yeah, knock him dead in there, will you? Before we begin this little conjecture about the events aboard Flight 33, let me introduce the cast. Incidentally, all of you are seated in just about the same places that your counterparts were seated that night. Playing the part of our flight attendant, Marianne Jordan, her sister, Evan. So let's hold the applause till later. Uh, Sheriff, you're Dr. Henson. My father is playing Dale Gregory, President of Southwest International. Mr. Olmsted, you're an insurance agent on vacation. 
Chuck Dorsey. Uh, you are passenger Davros. Dwayne, you're a sailor on leave, sitting next to a, an exchange student. Watch him. Uh, Deputy Costa, you are passenger T. Wilson and Virgil. Sorry to do this to you, but you're an eight-year-old traveling alone. Ladies and gentlemen, let's say hello to Mary Ellen. <laughs> Mary Ellen, this is for you. Now, perhaps with a little imagination, we can try to figure out where you all disappeared to. Let's begin with our flight attendant. How did you feel uh, during the flight? Not great. I had chills even after the captain raised the cabin temperature. I was coughing and I had a headache. What I have here is a tape of the cockpit recorder on flight 33. And what you're about to hear happened about 35 minutes out of Durango. What is it? Ah! Captain, we have to do something. Now, why did that woman scream? Well, let us make an assumption. She screamed because she had just seen the flight attendant pass out in the aisle. Action. Q. Ah! Uh, luckily, we had a doctor on board. Doctor? Oh, right, right. You probably asked someone to get your medical bag. Mary Ellen, would you get the doctor's medical bag? Mary Ellen? No, it's under the seat. There we go. Now, at this point, it appears that Captain Sanders wasn't all that sure what was going on back here. To do something until I know. Captain, there's a whole bunch of them. What's happening? Doctor, your diagnosis. What do these symptoms indicate? High fever, fast pulse, swollen lymph nodes? The uh, onset of bubonic plague. Thank you, Doctor. Bubonic plague, the plague bacillus. This carton, this carton contained an antibiotic, tetracycline. Probably all the doctor had on board. It's likely that he injected Marion and anyone else who showed the same symptoms, possibly our insurance agent and you, Duane. There were blankets on your seats. Wait, you mean you could catch it that quick from the flight attendant? The incubation period is anywhere from 12 days to a couple of hours. Quite a turn of events. They sure screwed up your plans, didn't they, Mr. Gregory? I don't know what you're talking about. You couldn't foresee this happening. But you're nothing if not resourceful. The way I figure it, you went up front to the cockpit, gestured to the captain to come out and see what was going on, and gestured so that your voice wouldn't be on tape. Slid into his seat, opened a few of the circuit breakers, thus shutting off the flight and the cockpit recorder and the two-way radio. You're a flat-out loony tune, son. Why would I do a thing like that? Because the doctor had told you that the captain was going to have to contact the authorities at Taos, have them meet the plane with the medical team. Inspection of this plane? Oh, that was something that had to be avoided at all costs. You're way off base, pal. Am I? Let's ask Mr. Wilson. Mr. Wilson, or shall I say, Mr. Blade? Because that's your real name. T.S. Blade, and with that name goes quite a prison record. You work for Mr. Gregory. Shall I say you ride shotgun for him? As a matter of fact, you had a gun on board in your attaché case, but you took it with you when the plane landed the first time and you and everybody else got off. How am I doing, Mr. Gregory? Okay, it works for me. But the rest of this, you're about a mile off base. Really? His dream was about to die, wasn't it? I'm, af I'm afraid you're losing me. His $10 million dream. His and his silent partners. That dream was going to let you walk away from this airline, from its debts, from its losses, from its worn out planes. You were just going to vanish and live the good life. Listen, you're leaving yourself open to a lawsuit. You weren't about to let that dream go. Not after you and your partner had invested your last cent. Not after you had discovered that 
phony mechanical on Flight 33's original plane. So they'd have to fly this heap north out of Mexico. Am I getting warm, Mr. Blade? Well, let's see if we can jog your memory. Drugs? Okay, you got me. It was a nice try, but that's the old ball game. It's not the old ball game. It's only about the seventh inning. That's it. I'm stretching. Will you sit down, Pop? You still haven't figured out where everybody is. Passengers, the crew, yourself. Well, I ordered Captain Sanders to find some place to land. Some place uh, we wouldn't be noticed. And he called your partner. Had him get his tail down there so that he could fly the shipment up north. Rendezvous with your buyer and your $10 million. I told him we had to have tetracycline. Lots of it. Well, his partner was the one who broke into the pharmacy at Rimstone. Isn't it lucky his partner could also fly a plane? Well, I wasn't sure he could handle it. Uh, rusty, you know. But he made it. He made it to the drop point at Cave In. But when he got there, what did he find? Hot rods up and down the runway, and a sheriff's car bearing down on him. He wanted to keep going, but he couldn't, because he was out of fuel. So he had to bite the bullet. So you landed the plane, cut the engines, headed for the rear, and hid in the laboratory. I walked over to the field after I heard the plane. Now, I told you that. Sorry, Virgil. You heard the sheriff and the deputy and all the others coming on board. So you let yourself out quietly and came up behind them as if you had just gotten on yourself. Got a little gift when Seymour Bindle worked up the courage to take a look. He came up behind you. As far as he knew, you had come on with the sheriff. Where did that phone call tell you to go? Got the tetracycline in time, so everybody's gonna be okay. Well, under the circumstances, did a hell of a job, Doctor. You didn't put on a bad show yourself, Alex. Thank you again, Mr. Black. Glad we could do something. Listen, has anybody seen my water pistol? Because if I've been ripped off, there's gonna be big trouble. Water pistol? You could probably pull one out of your hat. See if I can pull one out of your hat. Or something. Son, I'm almost sorry I sold the old place. You make it sound like the old family homestead, instead of some white elephant you won in a poker game. My boy, sometimes I think you've got no soul. What I've got is my money back, and a plane to catch, and so do you. Come on, let's get well, going. Well, there's one thing I still don't understand. What made you think Virgil might have been a pilot? Well, he mentioned it. 
Remember in the restaurant, he talked about ferrying all those movie stars over to Palm Springs? Uh, uh. Leonard, my friend, you didn't lie. I didn't? About what? About the liquid assets you hinted were under cave-in. Oil? Better than oil. This. Wine? Oceans of it. Hundreds and hundreds of bottles just like that. All nice and cool. But old, right? Pop, I got bad news for you. This 1897 Cote de Rome is probably the finest bottle of wine ever produced by Rothschild Pear. The bouquet is magnificent. Oh, I know. I don't think I want to know what's coming. You probably forgot to mention it, Leonard, but this place was built back in 98 by Count Henri Duvalier, a Frenchy high roller who got himself on the wrong side of the mucky mucks back in Paris. Some connoisseur of this, Henri. How much? About $9,000. A, a case? A bottle. At least that's what it brought at auction last year. I'll kill myself. Seymour, can I at least have a taste? Oh, be my guest, Leonard. It seems there never was a town named Cave in. Cave du Vin. What kind of name is that? That's Cave du Vin, Pop. It's French for wine cellar. <laughs> Next on St. Elsewhere, temperatures rise when Dr. Westfall takes a liking to an attractive new intern. And later tonight, Joan Rivers hosts The Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson. I'm Tom Brokaw. The red-hot mortgage market, with rates falling below 10% now, people are flocking to finance and refinance their homes. Tomorrow on NBC Nightly News.